Our weapon serves a lot of purposes on Bloodsport. In addition to being our offense, the weapon covering all sides of the bot acts as our first line of defense. Combined with the cost of a large blade and the way we try to give each one a personality, that made it especially heartbreaking when we broke two of the three new blades that we brought to Season 5 of BattleBots. What caused our weapons to both break like that after our 2019 blade lived such a long life? I'm Nick from Team BNS, and this is an in-depth look at our 2020 weapon failures. So, why did our blades break? The answer's simple. S7 tool steel sucks. Don't forget to subscribe, and thanks for- Just kidding. There's a lot more to it than just material bad. Plenty of other bots have broken S7 weapons in the past, but there's a reason it's so common. It's actually one of the more shock-resistant tool steels out there, and the hardness it can reach is beneficial when it comes to digging into armor or other weapons. AR-500 is the other common weapon steel for bots, and the material we made the disc out of. It has a higher fracture toughness and won't shatter like S7, but it's less hard, which means it often dulls quickly. It's also not quite as strong as S7, which means that in a world of theory and spherical cows, AR-500 bends before S7 breaks. As for how that bears out in practice, put a pin in that for now. Ray Billings has said in the past that he expects to get 10 fights out of an S7 blade. Let's see how we stack up against that. So far, we've used three different S7 blades in combat. In 2019, our original long bar got us through six fights and is still in one piece, save for a chipped tooth. The key is also S7, but has yet to be used. Next up is the thick bar, which ran for five fights and shattered in the lockjaw match. Then comes the real shocker, with the tri bar losing a whole arm on the first hit of its second match against Gruff. Finally, our AR500 disc ran in one fight against Scorpios and is the lone survivor of our three 2020 blades. When it comes to blade survival, we seem to be going backwards. Why is that? There are a few possible explanations. We're going to look at the roles that our opponents, as well as possible material and heat treat issues, design and manufacturing issues, and micro fractures may have played in these failures. We credit our opponents heavily for the destruction of these blades. In each case, they were able to exploit weaknesses of our bot and create a worst case scenario for each blade. The Gruff team welded big catch points, which they called chocolate bars, to their rigid armor. This maximized the recoil that went back into our own weapon. Lockjaw, meanwhile, was able to tank hits with their wedge until our spin-up issues gave them an opening. They were able to catch the underside of our bar when it wasn't spinning, something that's hard to do when it's at full speed, and deliver all their energy. Our blade pieces were well-earned trophies for these teams, but the fact remains that there were weaknesses there to exploit, and we need to dig deeper to prevent these failures next season. Material issues have been known to happen with weapons like these, like what happened to Wish Doctor this year. The fact that our 2019 blade survived while our 2020 batch didn't makes it tempting to blame bad material or heat treatment. However, we hardness tested the pieces after filming was over, and they were at exactly the 54 Rockwell C hardness that we asked for which according to the data in the Realbots manual is the best temper to use for an S7 weapon. Our blades also survived a lot longer than the ones that the Witch Doctor team said were defective, so we don't think that's the culprit in our case. Another factor here is our weapon geometry. Our weapons are large and have complex shapes compared to simple bars that have been proven successful in the past. These newer weapons were heavier than our old bar, and weight was devoted to increasing inertia and stability rather than strength. The tri bar in particular carried about 40% more kinetic energy than the original long bar, while also having three narrower arms instead of two stronger ones. Interesting is that the tri bar didn't break where the simulations predicted its max stress would be, but these static stress simulations can only tell us so much. These weapons were also water jet cut, in contrast to bots like Tombstone and Icewave whose bars were machined. Water jets can leave surface imperfections which might have been starting points for cracks. Machined bars have a much smoother edge surface, which could help explain why Icewave has such a good track record for bar durability despite having a longer, thinner weapon than ours. Unfortunately, we don't quite have the budget for a fully machined S7 tri bar. The Waterjet one was expensive enough. One last possibility to consider is a tiny invisible fracture forming in the weapon, either during a previous match or during heat treatment. A look at the fractures themselves can help us tell whether this was the case as microfractures sometimes leave discoloration on the fracture surface. The tri bar doesn't have any of this, but the thick bar has a very irregular fracture pattern with some mild discoloration. It broke into several pieces, with the initial hit removing pieces 1 and 3, and a later hit removing piece 2. 
Piece 1 went to Donald, but if we look at the place on Piece 2 that 1 separated from, you can see how the kinetic energy tore through this blade. It's possible that the weapon-to-weapon -weapon hit with Endgame combined with gradual wear and tear from our other brutal fights with Tantrum and Hijinx took their toll on this bar. Far stronger bars than this one have broken when caught by a vertical spinner like this though, so it's possible that the hit was just too much for it. So in conclusion, S7 tool steel is a solid material, but its brittleness and susceptibility to crack formation mean that an overall stronger S7 weapon may break due to a localized stress, while a tougher weapon may bend slightly or even not at all. S7 is used to great effect by some teams, but we've decided that it's not a great fit for our weapon goals. Another major takeaway is that hits from vertical spinners are very difficult to deal with when you're running a weapon as long as ours. Many AR-500 bars were bent in Season 5, so designing a weapon with both the toughness to avoid breaking and the stiffness to avoid bending is the next uphill battle we need to take on. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe!